Welcome to the new Parent Blueprint. This is created by myself, Kyle, and this is specifically for parents that are like, they have kids that are either just getting into recreation or maybe been in recreational for a little bit, or they're a new, like brand new competitive player. The key is that they're a beginner. Now, you're going to learn throughout this blueprint the basics and key frameworks that I believe are important for a new parent. Now, the great thing about this is it can be adapted and modified as we go through. Things can be added. This is the first template of it. Okay, so new parent blueprint, the basics, key frameworks. What you're going to see inside of this is really two parts. Two parts being that I'm going to share with you, for example, I don't know anything about basketball. So a lot of this will be touched on about basketball in the sense of I don't know anything about it. These are blueprints that and things that I would want to know prior to starting basketball. And then framed in the same way for soccer. And it's all very transferable, especially for young kids anyways. So moving forward, let's assume that I have a five-year-old son. Let's call him Little Kyle. Little Kyle comes to me and he says, Dad, I want to play basketball or I want to play soccer. Again, I don't know anything about basketball. I know plenty about football or soccer. So I'm going to frame it in both ways for understanding, for your understanding, and we're going to make it this way. So little Kyle comes to me and says, Dad, I want to play ball. And immediately, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, son, why do you want to play? And I want to see what's in his mind. What, what is he looking for? What are the ideas about this? And what we're going to find with this is probably one of three answers. He's going to come and say, I want to play for fun. Because it's a, sports should be fun. They should enjoy playing. Two would be, but he wants to play with friends. And then the third one, which happens a lot, is he says, I want to score. Kids all the time love to score. And those are the three typical answers that you'll get. Unless you're like me when I was a six-year-old or a five-year-old, I remember my parents told me that um, I wanted to be a professional baseball player. You may get that answer. But the whole point of this is to understand what is he looking for. And this will set the tone moving forward, but it's going to be one of three options, fun, friends, or he wants to score. And he wants to be like the main man, right? Like you go watch professional players in, in basketball or soccer. There's always a main man on a team that's putting the ball in the back of the net or hitting those bucket shots. And that's the idea that we're going to try to figure out. Why does little Kyle want to play? We're going to ask that question and we're going to identify what is he looking for? And this is going to set the tone of what we're trying to create and establish within this framework and the key concepts. So looking at the next piece, now before we put him into a game, we're going to do a couple of things. The first one we want to do is take him to, as you can see, a game. Now this could be college or professional. I prefer pro, obviously. That's the, the better fit. But it could be one or the other. And what we're doing with this is we're putting him into the environment. So I'm going to write that here for you, the environment. Sorry, wrong button. We're putting him into the environment so he can see what it looks like. And that's either going to reinforce his decision or tell him, hey, this really isn't the fit for me. Now, it might not be one game. We might need to do five games, 10 games. But to continuously fuel that idea of why he wants to play, we're going to bring him to the game to let him see what it looks like. Now, I live in Orlando. So a great thing we could do, for example, if it's basketball, we could go to the Magic games and we could also go to UCF games, one example. Or we could do football. So let's say it's soccer. We got Orlando City right here. We can go watch Orlando City games. And then there's plenty of like UPSL matches and stuff that we could go to from adult level competition um, that we could go watch for him to kind of see again what it looks like. So he has an idea um, at a high level. And then you can also even do lower level stuff. So again, he can see what it looks like um, to give him that trial run. Okay, the other thing I would recommend to do, and we'll start with the basketball side, as you can see here, basketball. And I would do this before putting him to play because I want to set him up for as much success as possible. Okay, so we are going to buy a basketball hoop. And I want you to notice here it says junior or mini size. Um, ideally for outdoor use, I'm going to assume that I don't have a big house where I have an entire area to be able to put a basketball hoop. So having it outside where he can play is the best thing. And what we're trying to identify here with this is, does he want to go outside and play without me forcing him? So you can see here, I put the word committed. Is he committed? Does he want to go out and practice? Because this is going to help me gauge how much effort, time, and attention do I need to put into him into the terms of the sport? Because a lot of times what parents will do is they want the kid to play versus the kid wanting to play. So we're trying to identify by doing this who wants it, parent or player. 
So that's where it's key. Next part, you can see practice and development starts at home. Always and forever will start at home. This is why we're doing this. Do that. And then these are the three skills that we're going to want to see. Dribbling, 1v1, shooting. For a basketball concept, my opinion, I don't know much about basketball, but I'm assuming these are the core skills that need to be developed for a basketball player. And notice I did not say passing. And the whole point of this is to practice and master the basics that come with the sport. Okay? Dribbling, beating somebody one-on-one -on -one and, and putting the ball in the back of the net would be the, the key thing here. Now, I will also add passing in basketball is much simpler than soccer. And the reason for that is everybody knows how to use their hands very, very well. A soccer player, however, does not know how to use their hands very, very well, which makes it harder for them. So we'll, and we'll touch on that in a second, but I'm just trying to bring that frame into reference here. But we're going to practice and master the basics over a period of time. Now, we'll add this. While I do want to say master the basics, nobody can expect that a player at five, six, seven, eight will master the basics anytime soon. It'll be years beforehand with continual refinement. Okay. The other thing we'll do is we will invite, if possible, kids to come play so we can have like pickup games, like two on two basketball, and start getting that idea of, we'll use this word, competition. So he can understand winning and losing. Now, that is not the end goal, but to feel the process of winning and feel the process of losing to go through that without even being in a competitive match. That's the idea that we're looking for here. And then the last piece of this is people always ask, Kyle, I want to buy equipment. So you can see here, uh, additional equipment, cones or poles. I always recommend poles over cones because cones, the person has to look straight down. Pull, <clears throat> sorry, it can be in front of you and meet you at eye level. So you can, for example, weave through the cones or I should say pull, weave through the pull here and still have the eyes up without having to look down to see the cone. That's very, very important from my perspective and keep that in the back of your mind. So if we take this, same principle for soccer, buy a soccer goal. If you need additional equipment because you wanna practice foot skills, buy poles instead of cones, just like I mentioned. We're gonna buy a goal that is junior and mini size for outside. We want to identify, is he committed or is he just playing for fun? That's cool. Practice always starts at home, like I mentioned. Dribbling, 1v1 shooting. Now, when we talk about shooting, we're not going to actually be teaching shooting, but we'll give him the end product to be able to put the ball in the back of the net. Okay, and then same thing, practice and master basics, and then we're going to invite friends to play pickup. Very, very important and very simple. Now, moving forward. Now, when we're going to be putting little Kyle to play, my first expectations, first expectations, playing the game. Okay, you can see there's four things. I want you to notice though, I did not put these two on there. I'm gonna write it here, winning or losing. I did not put either one of those on there from expectation standpoints. I'm looking for these four things. For them to be fun or for him to have fun, to dribble a lot, take a lot of shots, score goals, and then celebrate, you know? A lot of times kids will watch their favorite athletes on TV and do their favorite celebration like the Mbappe or wrong button, do the celebration like Mbappe or do the Ronaldo and do Sue. Whatever it is, that is my first expectation watching my player play. That's what I want. I want him to have fun, to dribble a lot, to be, and it's really the key word with dribbling here or key thought is creativity. I hit the wrong button again, sorry. Creativity. And I'll ask you this question before proceeding. Let's say you have somebody that's a painter, right? Or an artist, and he draws a lot or paints. Who's going to be more creative? The person, the, the painter, the artist, that has to pass the brush every 10 seconds. So get the brush, paint, and then have to pass, and then wait 10 seconds to get a brush again or the one that can have the brush the entire time and have the freedom to pick and choose what they do. I believe, my experience tells me, the person that has the paintbrush the entire time. And the reason for that is, if you take somebody and they have to give it up every 10 seconds, they feel pressure. They feel pressure to release it and they're gonna be stressed and thinking about why they need to give it up versus dealing with it and figuring it out. That's just something to know. Okay, now, before signing up, this is very important. We want to know a couple of things. 
the anticipated cost. Now this includes a couple of pieces. This is also what it will cost for like training, right? So I'll put this here for you, training. It'll also include game cost. And then this is a big one, travel cost. If there's any traveling. So we need to know what it costs for training. We need to know what it costs for games. We need to know what it costs for traveling. And then you can see here, we have schedule and we have uniform. My advice is to make sure you have a general outline of what it's going to cost you from training for the game or games and then traveling. So if you know that the team has to travel a good amount to get to wherever they need to go to play, you need to anticipate hotel, food, gas, and whatever else is going to come into that. And then also, how much is your uniform going to cost? Good question we have to answer. And then obviously the schedule. What do practice days look like? Is it Tuesday, Thursday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday? What is it? And then what is the anticipated game schedule? Those are things that you're going to want to know before signing up. There's more that we're going to touch on in a second, but just know that. And this is important. This is a huge thing for me. As a parent, I want to make sure that I have a good coach. This is huge. You need to have a good coach. Now, here are some ideas to think about from the coaching philosophy. And I'm going to be biased here because I'm going to give you mine. But I would want to know what is his or her coaching philosophy? What are they trying to teach? What I'm looking for here is what this one says. Creativity, dribbling, heads up, and shooting. Now, this is a basketball reference because it's based on basketball. But the point is, we want them to be creative. I want him to be creative. I want him to be able to dribble. I want him to focus on getting his head up to identify the court. And then the last piece in basketball is to shoot. Now, in soccer, I'm not going to have a huge thing on shooting, but we do want the, the child to put the ball in the back of the net. Okay, now, I do want to highlight one thing. Um, and this is where... Coaching comes into this lot, and this is where parents come into it a lot. So I'll write parent here as well. And it's about the key word that I'm going to write below here called passing. Now, here's the difference between, say, basketball and soccer when it comes to passing. Obviously, in basketball, you use your hands to pass. This is a very simple movement. Kids know how to pass the ball in a very proficient and simple manner. 